person joins a spiritual path, he is usually full of expectation and hope. There is an expectation that I'll get something, that my life is going to improve, that I'll gain all the knowledge in a few days. And then I land in this blissful land of eternal happiness and freedom, heavens and angels. The spiritual path is not covered in red carpet, sprinkled with rose petals. It is full of sharp thorns, high mountains, deep rivers, blind valleys. Nothing is clear here. It is dark. It is confusing. Most of you start on this journey without a guide and that makes it even more difficult. But even with a guide, it is a lonely path because the guide can only show you the map. It is you who needs to travel on the road. So many of us, when they encounter this kind of spiritual path, leave the path immediately, thinking that my worldly life was probably much better than this one. If it is all wishy-washy fluffy unicorns and rainbows, then you are on a wrong path. Those are just delusions that you cooked up in your mind. The real spiritual path is a trial, is a test. And even after that, everything is lost. Nothing is achieved. Why take so much trouble for losing everything with such great effort and pain? And you will know the answer only when you are further away on the path. Not now. Not now. It is just total confusion and darkness here. These words are not meant as a deterrent and not meant to confuse you even more. I am saying this so that you don't come here with all the delusions. It is for brave, not for everybody. I say don't come here, think twice, think ten times before stepping on any spiritual path. It does not matter whether it is a path of knowledge or any other more mysterious kind. You will encounter the same difficulties everywhere. They are universal. And why is that? Because it is the same mind. Different methods of treatment. Simply because you are taking another path does not make your mind different. So you are going to face difficulties on the path of knowledge also. There is no avoiding it. There is no shortcut in it. Although I told you that it is a direct path. It is a pathless path. You are already at the destination and so on. But that is assuming an ideal scenario. The path is very short. Our resistance, the way we are constructed, the impurities, the corruption human mind has undergone, turn it into a very long path. Be aware and be warned. In the spiritual terminology, these difficulties that we face, when we try to progress on any spiritual path, are called obstacles. So, an obstacle is any event, any situation, anything that causes you to halt or regress on your spiritual path. It keeps you away from your goal and it can send you off in the wrong direction also. The obstacles, they are infinite in variety. That is not an overstatement. Because the minds are infinite in variety. Everyone is unique in some ways and same in other ways, essentially. So everyone gets them, but everyone gets them differently. So for convenience, we divide the obstacles into two categories so that we can handle them, we can know them, we can study them and we can get rid of them. These uh, two types are internal obstacles and external obstacles. Getting rid of obstacles becomes a goal in itself for any spiritual seeker. Yes, there are some who face no difficulties or very few difficulties, very few obstacles. But uh, such people are rare. And my personal favorite theory is that they have already gone through the obstacles, countless obstacles in their previous lives. I can see the signs of struggle, the wounds and the scars that they received. There are no miracles in this spiritual adventure. Actually, you can see the spiritual progress as gradual removal of obstacles, gradual cleaning up of the impurities that shows you that spirituality and obstacles, they go hand in hand. They are like moon 
who has both the bright side and the dark side now that you understand how important and how deeply integrated obstacles are let's go and check some of them both internal and external and it will be a fruitless effort to list all of them i'm not going to do that i'm going to give you some major ones about which i had my own experiences let us start with some examples of internal obstacles the very first obstacle that many people encounter when they turn towards spirituality is not having a proper path many people they come here with almost no understanding of what spirituality is and what does it involve it is not the feel good stuff that you see these clueless gurus preaching on youtube there is a lot of junk here in the field of spirituality like in any other field and the newcomer falls for this junk spirituality it takes a long time to find the actual meaning of it and then a long time to settle on a path it is easy to get overwhelmed by the number of paths that are here so initially there will be confusion there will be lack of direction there will be lack of means in this mass advertising people are selling their spirituality to you there is a sale of enlightenment 20% discount money back guarantee why because the impurities and the darkness is so deep that the spirituality has become a consumer item it is not only in west i see the same thing in india it is not supposed to be sold so when the ones who show the direction are themselves without any direction how can you even hope to find direction here when i said that this can be the biggest obstacle yes it is the biggest obstacle you are going to waste a major part of your life in fake spirituality buying spiritual stuff buying the services of gurus and buying tricks tips books and objects hoping that these are going to make you spiritual whatever that means you don't have any clue what it means this cluelessness is the first obstacle i'm calling it an internal obstacle because it is within you we do blame the external situations and all but the cluelessness is my problem the world is what it is it is going to take advantage of your clue cluelessness what else can people do they know only this much they don't know how to guide you but they know it very well how to misguide you and use you some people cannot decide what path to take some people cannot even decide whether they need anything spiritual or not and some people they fluctuate the swing between the world and the spiritual domains so i am going to tell you the obstacles but sometimes i am going to tell you a remedy and i am not claiming that it's going to work 100% no it is just a suggestion probably it will work you can try it there are no guarantees here this is spiritual field nothing is guaranteed so when you feel that you don't have any goal don't see any direction don't have any path don't know what to do but you want to be spiritual you can start by reading books yes by reading books you won't know much and won't become spiritual you can do the guru shopping like try a few gurus see who says what whom you like most who is more attractive to you so on a mingle with spiritual community see the effects that the paths have on people check whether they are happy peaceful wise or they look like just released from a madhouse ask for advice ask for guidance ask for opinions never act on them without thinking but collect the knowledge about the spiritual scene in this world and this time study how it was in the ancient times study the biographies of great masters check that they did not achieve anything see that you will probably end up like them check the experiences of other people who are on the spiritual path and like i say the path will choose you you cannot choose a path the second major obstacle is mental afflictions just like everybody suffers from bodily afflictions diseases illnesses of all kinds some are 
minor, some are major, some are chronic and some are terminal. In the same way, almost everyone suffers from mental afflictions of various kinds, various intensities. And if there is a mental affliction, it is impossible to walk on this spiritual path. It is impossible. With uh, an unfit body, you can manage some things because the knowledge is in mind. The transformation is of the mind. The body is in use and through vehicle. But uh, with my, a mental affliction there, it is impossible to start. And be, some people, they manage to start there and then the mental afflictions won't let them progress. They become an obstacle. The afflictions can be of many kinds. And by afflictions, I don't mean something which comes and goes. That would be other kind of obstacle that we are going to study under the external obstacles. A mental affliction is difficult to remove, difficult to cure. It can be fears, phobias, trauma, retardation and the neurophysiological kind, Alzheimer's or things like that. Genetic issues, if they show up, nothing can be done usually and you will need to first clear the mental affliction, try to clear it using therapy or anything else, any other methods before you start on the spiritual journey. They are called internal because usually the person is not aware of them. Mental afflictions are difficult to diagnose because you cannot see them. People are good at hiding them. They learn some behavior patterns and they repeat those patterns in front of others. They hide or repress their own mental disorders from themselves. And when the mind starts changing, which it will on any spiritual path, the afflictions, they show up in their full ugliness. Yes, if it is something minor, the teacher can prescribe a little bit of cure there. There, there can be a remedy there if it is a minor thing. You hate somebody or <laughs> you went through a difficult situation and the impressions are still there on the memory. The guru or the teacher can give you something as a medicine but usually nothing can be done. And sometimes knowing things in the spiritual field can make the afflictions worse. For example, if you have fears of various kinds and you are told that the world is an illusion, this is not our home, we are trapped here. The body is not yours. You don't have any will. So on. These are standard spiritual teachings. And this can actually augment the fear. This can magnify the fear thousand times. So instead of progress, you will see a retardation here. Instead of improvement, you will see that the affliction has become worse. Now there is no hope for cure. Such a person will quickly leave the spiritual path or if he stays, nobody can help him. Sometimes the Guru will lie to such a person that seeing the affliction, seeing that it's going to make his condition even worse, they are told some things which are not true. For example, if uh, somebody has a very unhealthy attachment to the family or any relation, the direct teaching is not given that all the relations are illusory and this attachment is the cause of bondage. Because that is going to cause a lot of trouble for this afflicted person. Instead, what is given is a lie that yes, you are responsible for your family. You need to take care of your family. You need to worry about your family. Protect your family. Never leave them. And that part remains under ignorance. Till the teacher finds an opening after many years probably. Or after many lifetimes, who knows. Usually life is the biggest teacher and the life teaches you that you are deluded. This teaching is in form of a suffering. The next big obstacle is the ego. It is the sense of I-ness, my-ness, me and mine. What is there in the spirituality for me? This is the first question the ego is going to ask. And if told that, no, there is nothing for you, actually you will be obliterated. You will be no more. The ego is the first one to resist. And the resistance comes up in various forms. Oh, I'll choose this path, not that path, because this path is the real path where I get many things like gold, good relations, prosperity. I'll become famous. Everybody will love me. I'll write books and everybody will read me and I'll get prizes and lots of money. This is what ego is going to tell you. This spirituality is good for me. And of course, 
the yoga makes my body healthy and so beautiful this is ego speaking when told that nothing like this is going to happen probably exactly opposite will happen it becomes a big resistance so the remedy for it is again lies the teacher is going to tell you some lies the spiritual lies instead of the religious kind which are given to ordinary people like you will go to heaven and you will <laughs> stay there forever singing songs and whatever you like the practitioner or the spiritual seeker is given spiritual lies that yes do the yoga and do the poses you will become beautiful yes you will remain young forever get on this diet no disease will touch you you are going to become immortal you will get powers and all kinds of such false promises are put before the seeker this is a remedy remember and as soon as the teacher finds an opening there the person matures either because of the practices of various kinds or because of the droplets of knowledge that he or she is receiving every day from the teacher a series of insights and realizations one day the coconut cracks open and the teacher can penetrate the mind and slowly dislodges all these delusions from the lies to the harsh reality of spirituality the ego can appear in the form of beliefs and blind faith a belief is the most uh, hard thing to remove from the mind and when covered by blind faith trust it is impossible to remove it many people once the belief is formed they die with it they are not ready to give it up and beliefs become big obstacles in any spiritual path because the spiritual path is about destroying the beliefs if you acquire the beliefs if you become a blind believer then you are not on a spiritual path you are in some kind of cult or religion or a worldly person full of beliefs and blind faith spirituality is about hard facts truth evidence logic it is very rational it is about knowledge and the knowledge is exactly opposite of beliefs so those who come here with lots of beliefs and they seek fulfillment of their beliefs like they seek support for their beliefs and they choose a path which is in alignment with their blind beliefs not something which opposes their beliefs and you can guess that they are not going to progress they remain where they are actually they become it becomes worse because now they find a support for their beliefs now the belief is not going to leave them and the thing that i am right that is why it is categorized as internal obstacle because it is inside nothing can be done and the teacher comes up with a skillful means to circumvent the belief system if the teacher is very kind otherwise the teacher simply kicks him out it's not worth his time what happens is life is a teacher and the beliefs ultimately produce suffering what can lies produce what can blind faith produce disappointment frustration suffering pain rejection failure that's what beliefs and blind faith produce and then <laughs> the seeker turns back to the teacher comes back on a proper spiritual path abandoning the beliefs so the remedy here is to wait till the suffering reaches a high level and that is when the iron is hot and you can hammer it that is when you can forge it into a right shape this mind is ripe because of the heat of the suffering another internal obstacle is an unfit body i am calling it internal although it is apparent it's tangible because the body is diseased due to some reasons that are internal it can be the bad diet it can be lack of exercise it can be genetic things it can be mental disorders that appear in the body as physiological disorders and if the body is not fit it becomes an obstacle the body affects the mind there is no awareness the person cannot sit quietly cannot attend fall sick cannot travel and if the spiritual practice requires a particular kind of body which can do exercises complicated exercises and needs to sit for long long hours silently still then obviously the body becomes an obstacle that path is not right for that person and actually no spiritual path is right for that person because the affliction of the body will show up 
one point or another the remedy here is to first cure the body make the body fit that's not difficult the problem is internal because people think that the body has nothing to do with spirituality remember the body is just another layer in the memory because it is connected very tightly with other layers it is going to retard other layers if there are addictions bad habits pains in the body diseases in the body your entire attention will be taken by them such people often come come to spirituality in hopes that they will be healed of their illnesses that is a different path actually the path of miracles that is not spirituality so anyway get it cured i am not saying you need to be an athlete to join a spiritual path or the ashrams won't admit anybody who is less than 6 feet and has a perfect weight and strength it is not army but it has to be a reasonably fit body unfit bodies are lazy and the guru won't waste his time on such people many people they simply bypass the teacher they are so confident and full of a delusion that i know everything all i need to do is sit like this breathe like this get the mantra and i am spiritual now of self realization yes happens in a minute i am not this i am not that why do i need a guru for that why do i need a teacher for that such people do not progress beyond the basics yes some are very bright some are geniuses and they need very little guidance like a hint or two and then they just shoot up but most of us we are ordinary just to learn the alphabet and numbers we need teachers and spiritual path is the biggest challenge in this universe if somebody hopes to achieve something there without a teacher he is a complete idiot yes you may not get a traditional teacher or you may rely mostly on the books and videos and content like this you may never see the guru in person or you may find more extraordinary ways to get the guidance for example from the other worlds or something like that but there is no progress without a teacher you will be lost there is guaranteed some people have this complaint that you no know, most of the teachers are fake they have just made it a business and all and that is true and such people also teach us something the bad experience is a learning experience we know who is not a teacher that is a valuable lesson it is just like going in the market and buying products you know about the products only after you use them for a while and then slowly you become a perfect buyer who knows everything about all the products and people call you people take your advice to make sure that they buy the right right product because you have gone through all those experiences you have bought all the wrong products and now you can guide others that please don't buy this one similarly even though there are all kinds of teachers there you will need to get your own experience or rely on somebody who is already experienced in the matter of teachers and once you get a proper teacher then there is extremely fast progress it's not that they are not there they are there they do not advertise themselves they are not looking for students actually <laughs> and they are not even avoiding the students they are waiting for the right one to find them sometimes they find the right one a teacher is always busy catching the fish and most of the fish he just throws it back throws them back in the water he is looking for somebody special who is worthy like we discussed in the beginning of this series the worthiness of a student those who have the qualities of a seeker that is what a teacher is looking for and if you don't find a teacher it is an indication that the you that you lack those qualities if every teacher turns out to be either a businessman who is trying to rob you or is trying to use you in some way has is trying to turn you into a slave a follower or you find teachers who are not interested in you they simply reject you outright please don't come to my ashram or they keep teaching useless stuff don't lie don't steal don't do this don't do that don't be greedy and 10 years have passed and all you know is not to be greedy something is wrong there with the teacher is not interested in teaching you anything more than that and now you can look inwards and see whether you lack the qualities or do you have the qualities so that can become an obstacle if you don't have the qualities cultivate the qualities 
once you get rid of the mental afflictions ego beliefs and uh, make your body fit and uh, fit enough for spiritual teachings and you find the right direction right path then it is necessary that you cultivate the qualities know what are the qualities if you don't know them go to the teacher who is rejecting you ask him why what do i lack what do i need to do i don't want any knowledge just please tell me what do i lack and that teacher will be happy to tell you that's what teachers do they tell you where you are wrong nobody likes this kind of job but they somebody needs to do it it is a thankless job so if you surrender if you are open then the teacher will be happy to tell you where which qualities are needed and that is the remedy if you already believe that i have all the qualities actually i am the most perfect person in the town to become a student then probably you don't have any qualities there is another kind of very dangerous obstacle which is misinterpretation of the teachings and i came to know this only after i started teaching because i never did this myself probably most of the time i interpreted all the teachings correctly and i was very very skeptical so there were less chances of misinterpretation but those who are not skeptical the blind believer tendencies and lack of intelligence can cause misinterpretation of the teachings for example i say that the world is an illusion you are trapped in this world your goal is to get rid of human life human birth and that poor seeker goes and commits suicide why because that is the proper way world who needs it it's an illusion body is a trap you need to get out of the get out of the human existence why not just kill myself has not understood the abcd of spirituality and has already acted and not a small action it is a very dangerous and unnecessary action so i say attachments are bad for you don't be attached to relations to people and the next thing you do is leave your family leave your family on on the street now the children are orphaned your wife is begging and everybody is kind of blaming you they have no good words for you this is a gross misinterpretation of the attachment thing the teacher never told you to act or never told you to act in foolish manner he simply told you that this is the reason of your ignorance the attachment is the reason so yes the attachment also can become um, an obstacle but it is an external kind of obstacle because the people are outside you but uh, misinterpretation is uh, an internal thing the seeker the student has misinterpreted the teachings and, uh, and the confidence levels are so high that won't be able to progress beyond the misinterpretations so the remedy is again the teacher the teacher is responsible for seeing the misinterpretation telling it that please correct it <laughs> that is not what I, what i meant or i gave you the highest teaching that does not mean that you will know it don't try to interpret it try to know it by the means of knowledge that were provided to you then there is an hidden obstacle which is called resistance there are unknown processes in the memory that cause an obstacle on your spiritual path it can be repressions of various kinds it can be some very ancient reasons there and they cannot be seen sometimes they cannot be seen by a teacher also because they are hidden nobody comes to know why there is no progress you are a good student you have the qualities you are doing the effort and so on there are no major mental afflictions you are in a good tradition good path no progress at all you know nothing beyond the words there is no change of any kind now obviously there is an obstacle here but nobody knows what it is the reason is unknown and the student is completely unaware of these things actually the student thinks that i am progressing well but the teacher can sense it there are some resistances there the resistances are so strange that they can cause phenomena to happen this is all mind this is all one memory remember this and the resistances are so deep sometimes they are vast that we have no clue what they are how it works we have no clue the person wants to attend the satsang let's say physical meeting gets into the car and the car breaks down 
He misses the satsang. Whenever he wants to go to satsang, there is some strange event that causes him to not go there. He falls sick. Somebody else in the family is sick. Or his boss calls him that our meeting is more important. Do you want your job or do you want satsang? And similar things. Sometimes he meets people who poison his mind. Don't go to that guru. He is a fake guru. He is going to rob you. He is going to make your life. He is going to waste your life. He read this. Don't you know that? And so on. And the person loses interest completely in, in the guru or in spirituality or both. Nobody knows who poisoned him. Nobody knows who was that person. Or the person will deliberately choose a wrong path. The teacher is saying, look, this is the right path for you. And he says, no, I know what is right path for me. And I'll choose this one, not the one that you tell me. And the teacher understands that, oh, a resistance here. Sometimes the person is very logical and knows that, yes, that path is right for me. Still he chooses the other one. Oh, I'll do that in my spare time. It is so easy. This one is difficult, so I choose this. And so he wastes his time. Now you can see that these are some very mysterious ways in which the memory structures avoid any kind of change. They can sense that there is a change that is coming and they want to avoid it. And sometimes it is so subtle that we cannot see what is the process there that is avoiding this kind of change. Suddenly a mysterious fear will emerge in you. Suddenly there will be doubt on the teachings. And... Uh, you can't do much when the resistance is there because you can't even see what is happening. The best way is to wait and watch. Slowly, the mind now adapts to the new way of life, sees that the spirituality cannot be stopped because it's a big decision and it can be delayed but it cannot be stopped. Sometimes the whole life is going to pass. Many lifetimes they come and go and then the resistances are over. You can say that the beliefs are a kind of resistance but the teacher can see the belief. You can also see your beliefs. It's not difficult. If pointed out, they are seen. But the resistances are so deep in the mind that it becomes kind of difficult to see them. Sometimes they manifest in a very, very strange way and a very experienced teacher can see them. But usually nothing can be done. I personally don't have any remedies for it except I ask that person to wait. Push it a little bit so that the resistance can manifest and we can overcome it. But usually, students are not ready to do that. I have seen that there is no cure for a resistance. Another internal obstacle is the lack of effort. Now, a person will be instantly attracted to a path where it says, effortless effort, no effort, no practices are here. And path of knowledge is like that, you see, no effort. But the first verse, the first teaching is so difficult to grasp that... You give up. You told me, I'll get everything in one day. Here, I cannot understand even one word that you spoke. You made 50 episodes. I don't understand even one of them. What should I do? And obviously the answer is, make some effort to understand. And what is in this effortless path? And there is an obstacle. The problem is that uh, the path is effortless only for those who are ready, who are ripe. If you're not ready and you've chosen this path because no other path is suitable for you, then what is the solution here? Make some effort. And many people are not ready to put the effort. There are other paths that are very, very effortful, that require a lifestyle that is completely devoted to the path. There is too much effort there. The demand, that kind of effort and dedication, which people don't have the courage or interest. They don't do it. The meditation, okay. The instructions say that it must be done for two hours per day, exactly at this time, with this kind of diet and this kind of clothes and in this kind of pose. And the mind is a lazy thing. It wants to save the energy. And yes, it, it takes a lot of energy to do these things. It does look like that the person is sitting there peacefully, but no, you need to do it to know it. And then they, they'll start cutting the corners. Oh, two hours is too much. I'm very advanced. I'll just do it in one hour instead of two. Or I'll do it tomorrow because I have this important thing to do. And I have a party. There is a birthday party here. And no, no, not tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going for a movie. <laughs> so, 
the spiritual life is kind of something which you do when you are getting bored okay i have nothing to do today so probably i'll meditate for 5 minutes and i'll see if some miracle happens otherwise i'll do it next year and i'll join some other teacher you see this teacher is so boring keeps talking about you are this emptiness and i don't want to be emptiness so no effort there no effort to understand the teachings no effort to do the practices if the path requires practices no interest there the interest lies somewhere else probably in gaining powers or watching the miracle shows or just killing your time because it is the fashion these days to be spiritual so fake effort yes sometimes it looks like the student is so busy doing something but it's a fake effort and i have seen this in ordinary life also that there are managers and so called people on the high post who are completely incompetent just to show that they are working just to show that they are producing results they fake it they are busy for 10 hours doing nothing they produce no results just take credits from somebody somebody else they steal the credit and they just make pretty presentations that how much they are contributing to the company unfortunately <laughs> such people are the majority there are few who are really talented they do the all the hard work all the donkey work and they never get promoted they get used similarly the same tendencies they leak into spirituality where the student is doing hard work to impress the teacher talks like a saint walks like a master is completely empty literally inside this is a big obstacle yes the teacher can see it but the teacher cannot do anything about it there is no cure for fakeness ultimately the student leaves that is the cure probably those who cannot do the effort they will simply waste their time although nothing is achieved here to achieve nothing it takes effort then there is something interesting which i am labeling as missing the opportunities when you take a look at your life you will find that it is full of events that are opportunities for growth and sometimes we are blinded sometimes because of the ignorance we cannot see that these events are actually opportunities something bad happens and you say well i am so spiritual i never did anything wrong i never killed even an ant in my life and this horrible things they happen to me and you sit there and cry this is a missed opportunity you could have simply seen the lesson learned your lesson and resolved never to repeat that mistake because if it happened to you it must be your mistake this is the rule here this is the universal law so why don't you see your mistake learn from it exploit this opportunity somebody died in your family now you are sitting there crying the teacher told me that death is unreal why did why did it happen then and it is so horrible now what am i going to do without this person who is dead look at this opportunity the life is trying to teach you something death is of the body that is what the life is teaching you and you are refusing to see so the opportunity is missed here if something good happens you simply enjoy and celebrate that is also a missed opportunity you will find that a whole of our lives are like this every event here is a lesson do not miss these opportunities usually if you have a very wise teacher he will point out to you sometimes after the event has happened sometimes the, when you have lost that opportunity and this the remedy so that next time you remain careful grab the opportunity as quickly as you can remember the obstacle is the path it is intertwined with spirituality in the next part we are going to study some of the external obstacles <laughs>